Great, thank you. Thank you everybody for joining today as well. Uh, today we have office hours and in particular, we have split these office hours into parts. We have three hours ahead. So the first hour will be uh, uh, Javier in this case, conducting a demonstration of the step-by-step -step quick start guide with the 80 max example that we proposed to you on on the other day. So essentially, just as a reminder, remember that 80 max is a type of motive that is called the sparse linear algebra. In particular, we are computing the transpose of a matrix multiplied by a vector using not dense matrices, but sparse matrices where the zero value elements are not stored in memory. So we somehow compress the data by storing only non-zero elements. And this makes the data structure in our programs more complicated because we are not just use a 2D array. We have to use an alternative uh, data structure. CRS, compressed row storage, is an example of that, very uh, quietly used in, in many scientific codes, but there are, my, I think I remember up to 10, 15 or more uh, different types of uh, sparse storage format. So CRS is one of the one of them. So uh, Javier will go through all the uh, demo to quick start. At, at the end, we will discuss some of the performance that you might expect to get on the Cori system. In addition, you were proposed uh, to try to do um, <clears throat> some of the worksheets that we prepared for the training series last year, 2019. And in particular, uh, we had we played with two examples, the very simple Pi computation and the real interesting one, Lulesh. Lulesh microkernel, a simplified version of the Lulesh kernel benchmark for training purposes. So this is a physics simulation software that uh, uh, performs this kind of unstructured Lagrange explicit shock hydrodynamic computations. But essentially, what you will see is that following the same procedure without knowing exactly what is the science behind it and why the code, what's the formulation behind the, the simulation code, you can still follow the same procedure step by step, focus on the code. Uh, let me. <laughs> submit my reply to the, to the survey. And essentially you can do the same. Do the profiling, try to understand how to run and verify the correctness of Lulesh, and you should expect to get some performance results. So we will discuss this performance of AP Max and Lulesh MK, two different types of sparse reductions. Once uh, Javier finishes the, the demonstration of the quick start and the Lulesh, uh, parallelization of Lulesh MK, on the Cori system using the CPU, multi-core, multi-threading with OpenMP, and using the GPU uh, with uh, OpenMP and OpenACC implementations, okay? So I think it, on my side is good to leave it here. So I will stop sharing the screen and we'll hand over to Javier. Javier, are you ready? Yep, hello everyone. Good morning for you. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing my screen right now. You should be seeing two things, the uh, no machine client and the PDF with the quick start. Um, is, this, is this okay? Manuel, can you confirm that my sharing is okay? Yes. Uh, the yes. Font, font size, font size of the console is good. Hopefully now it's okay. Okay, so uh, what I've done, I loaded the, the modules that uh, we loaded yesterday, you have those in the slides. Uh, I've also allocated, uh, sorry, showing here. I've also allocated a node in the, in the uh, GPU node. I'm trying to see if I can show you the, the module loads. Right. So I'm on a GPU node. And you were also instructed in the first step of the quick start to copy uh, the parallel folder to your scratch directory. So that, is, that would be uh, the first steps. 
And I will just start on step number or number two by unzipping the creative mux folder. Okay, so once we have uncompressed it, we can simply make run, which will compile and run the sequential version of ATMAX. Just for your reference, while Javier is doing that, the size uh, 17,000 uh, means that uh, the, system, the application is creating a 2D array of 17,000 rows by 17,000 columns, and it is uh, generating zeros in the data, and the sparsity of 0 0.6 is the percentage of uh, non-zeros that this test matrix has. So this test matrix is then in the code translated into CRS format to remove the storage of the zero values. Okay, this is what the size and the sparsity mean here. Uh, so just for reference, I was just loading the, uh, just wanted to show the modules that I uploaded for this session on this uh, GPU node. Okay, I will continue now. So I have uh, uncompressed the, the AT max star and ran the sequential version. We got a execution time of over one second. So the first thing that the quick start tells us to do is to try the first tool, the entry tool of Parallel Analyzer, which is PW Report. So if we do so, it would uh, tell us that there was a failure and it suggests us to repeat the invocation, but just with this flag so that now it can output uh, the errors. So let's see what the error is about. And as you can see, we are missing an include uh, file. So uh, as instructed in uh, step six, uh, you can specify compiler flags by appending uh, slash slash, and then the required um, flags, which in this case is adding the, sorry, the lib directory. Let's see if you notice before you have the include files in the lib directory. So, uh, Executing again itmux with that flag, the PDB report analysis for itmux.c. Uh, we can see that there are no more failures now. Uh, all the files could be analyzed. Uh, we get some recommendations, a couple of suggestions on what we could do next, which tools we could invoke next, next with analyzer, either PW loops or PW check. So, uh, like it says here uh, in the quick start in step six. Uh, there are no opportunities, however, there are three recommendations. So let's follow the PW check invocation recommendation. I will type it again, PW check, ATMUX.C. And again, I need to add the lib folder. And we are now on step uh, seven. So the suggestion uh, that we should focus on is this one, which is telling us that maybe we can increase the code coverage, which was quite poor before, by aligning this computation to a dedicated function. So let's do exactly that, as instructed in step eight. For that, I will open the source file. Uh, what we will do is well, in this case, I will try just copy pasting here. Looks to be a little bit faster. So we will add a new compute function. Struggling today with my keyboard. <clears throat> I do something different. Um, I already have one version of this. So, 
these two controls. Okay, uh, it looks like I will have to write. Really sorry about this, but I am not used to the English keyboard, so uh, I'm trying to actually guess the. Okay, so finally managed to solve that to create a compute function, which is just this part over here of line. So we just delete it. Now I have to actually call Okay, that was a little bit painful, but hopefully now I have completed step eight. Let's see if it builds and run correctly. We should get about the same execution time uh, as before, which was slightly over one second. Yeah, exactly. All right. So uh, now we have followed the PW check recommendation of outlining our, our loop. Let's run again uh, PW report to see if we have more code coverage than before, and we do now. All the functions and uh, half of the loops are analyzable. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any parallelized lines of code, so that's okay. And now we have uh, two opportunities of parallelization where before we have no, we have zero. Okay, so next step, number 10. Let's run PW loops to actually get information about those parallelization opportunities. Okay, this is a little bit too big, but but I'm going to write, yeah, this is the useful information here. So we have two loops that probably were analyzed could uh, analyze. And it detected two sparse computation patterns for them. It classified one of them as a seen the sorry, as a seen the parallelization opportunity, and the other one, the outer loop, as a multi-threading parallelization opportunity. And that's the one that we want to focus on. It is also telling us that uh, this loop can be uh, automatically parallelized using PW directives, okay? The other tool that we have in parallel analyzer to actually parallelize code. So uh, we can also use um, PW loops to get information about the exact function that we want to see. That's the minus minus code function. Here we are telling it that we only are interested in the compute function from the attimux.c file. And it prints that uh, function with an annotation that there is a parallelization opportunity for the outer loop in line uh, 19. So now let's try to use PW directives to actually parallelize that loop. Uh, let's use the full path. So, 
Well, if I do this, it will tell me that I'm missing uh, the edition mode, which can either modify the file in place, which is a uh, little dangerous, or create a new file. So in this case, I will create a new file and I will name it OpenP. And I forgot to specify the loop line. Again, now I'm missing the compile flag. So I add it again, and now we should have all the information required. So that's correct. We successfully created our parallel version. It was parallelized using an atomic uh, access strategy. We have an alternative, which is the explicit prioritization. We will see this more later in other parallel world trainer when we create different um, parallel versions. And we can see, let me show the code. So, okay. so here in the function that we created before, we have now the directives for the parallel version for uh, multi-threading with the GPU with uh, OpenMP. So now I can build and run. So I'm running the, the sequential version again. I will just copy this here and modify to use the source code file ATMX uh, OMP that we just created. All right, and now we can run again ATMX with the same size. So we got our worst time. So this parallelization uh, is not uh, efficient. So we should work on improving it, okay? Uh, the checksum is the same. We haven't checked before, but yeah, you can take my word for that. And we will see different strategies to see if we can actually produce a parallel version that is faster and not slower than the sequential version. So uh, now we will switch to Power Trainer uh, because it's a graphical environment that is more suitable to perform different experimentations and quickly create different versions and uh, experiments. We've been, we've been seeing the different tools uh, of Paraguay Analyzer, the different tools that we can invoke from the command line, but now let's switch to a graphical environment. And let's see if I can hide this a little bit. Okay, hopefully the font in trainer is big enough. We'll try to make everything fit to the screen now. Okay, okay this should uh, make it quick. So let me close this project, which I was using before. And Let's open the folder that we were working on just a moment ago, which is in the homework, the ATMAX folder. So here you have the version that I created a moment ago and the original version with the outline. Okay. So first thing first, uh, as it's telling you here in the quick start guide, uh, the first thing that you will notice upon opening the ATMAX file is that you get an error, the same that you were getting before when you passed the minus minus show failures flag. It is that uh, we are missing some header file. So we need to provide this information as we did with the slash slash in the command line. Now we can do here in the project configuration of uh, our trainer, with the same syntax, which is the GCC CLAN uh, flag syntax. So we just tell you that inside the lib folder, there are their missing include files. So now the analysis succeeded and it found one opportunity for parallelization and one recommendation. You can see that uh, Power Trainer shows uh, a warning sign in yellow for recommendations. And if we have a defect, it would be shown as a red warning. We can click on it to get more information. And here it's telling us that uh, we have a couple of variables that have not defined the smallest possible scope, which is the best recommendation. So in this case, for instance, it is referring to the K variable. 
uh, that it should be within the scope that it starts at line uh, 19. So let's do that. Actually, these are the loop variables. So I will just add here the declarations and I can remove this um, like that. The recommendation goes away. So now we are left with the opportunity, which is this green circle. We can click it to see the different qualification options that our trainer does offer for us. So what we did before was just this step number 14. And now before parallelizing, let's do what uh, the Google Star suggests in step 15, which is running uh, the code. So let's click run. Uh, what happens is that we don't, we don't have the commands uh, configured in the project configuration to build and run the code. We have before entered the analysis flags required for the leaf header directory, but uh, you can open any folder that contains code and start using a trainer right away. It doesn't require that you do a lot of configuration beforehand. So it will require, uh, it will ask you to fill the required information at any point and it, in this case, this corresponds to the build make command and the run command. Uh, if I click OK, it will then first build and then run the, the code. So we should get about the same uh, results as before since this is sequential code. Uh, if I recall correctly, it was over one, one second. Yeah, exactly that. One point one. And we are over with uh, step 15. Let's move to step 16. Uh, which, uh, like I said before, is clicking the green circle. This uh, is equivalent to uh, the information that PD loops reported. And now, by clicking parallelize, we will do something similar to what we did before with PW directives tool. So uh, we will just leave the defaults here and click parallelize straight away. And we get the same parallelization as before the OpenMP atomic access for multi threading on the CPU. So now we can again uh, run the code as it is instructed in steps uh, 17. Also notice that a new version was created in the version manager, which is this area uh, on the right of the code editor. Uh, at any time you can restore and create a new version. So for instance here, I will name this OpenMP uh, Atomic. So later we will restore the original version and create different versions. But right now let's run and see if we have uh, uh, some speed up or like before some worse execution time. Just executing right here. Um, just like before, 3.5 seconds. Okay, so uh, I already did this, which was creating the version by clicking on this button and entering the OpenMP slash uh, atomic. So now let's restore the original version that was automatically saved for you upon parallelization. And let's try something different. What we will try now is a strategy called explicit privatization, which will create uh, explicitly a variable uh, that does the privatization uh, for the parallel code. So let's leave this as it is, open MP, CPU, multi-threading. But now let's add uh, the variable Y, which is the one where the computation is, is done. Uh, we need to specify the range for that variable, which is between zero and n. Okay. So now we get a lot of a lot more of code. We can compare that with the previous version, which was just the fragments from OpenMP. And now we have this. Uh, y private variable that was inserted for us, and uh, all the computations are done over that uh, private variable, which is private uh, to a grid thread. Let's run this code again, see if we have any difference. Here we are. Let's see. Yeah, and the time was about half of the original time. Uh, the sequential version was 1.1, and now we have uh, a little bit less than half a second. So this now is faster, about twice as faster. Um, we can create a version for this, save it, uh, call it OpenMP explicit, as uh, the strategy was explicit. I can delete this version. 
And let's restore the original once again. So now we want to uh, experiment with the GPU. So uh, like Manuel said in the beginning, we have uh, updated the quick start. Maybe you didn't see the steps. Uh, now at this point, you were told to just experiment yourself uh, with the GPUs or any other versions that you felt uh, that you wanted to experiment with and compare the results. But uh, we thought it, will, it would be inter interesting for you to actually see the steps to create a GPU version. So uh, in order to do this, we need to prepare the code a little bit for the, for the GPU, since we will need to transfer the matrices from the CPU memory to the GPU memory. So we will need some information that we will have to provide to both OpenMP on, uh, or OpenACC uh, about those uh, ranges, data ranges that need to be transferred. So we have to do the following uh, modifications to the code that are going here. We first have to restore the original version, which I already did, and add a new parameter to the compute function. So let's do that. Run, run, and set. And now we have to pass the size of the in sparse matrix. Uh, which you can see there, it could be something like this. What is happening here while Javier is typing is that when we usually code sequential programs, we just need uh, in the loop and in the function the information needed to run it. But when we parallelize it in, in the CPU using multi calls, all the information is available. The key change here is that when we move to the GPU, it's not just about information that is needed for the computation. We also need to have available in the function, the information that is needed to do the data transfers. So in this case, to do the computations, you don't need to know how many non-zero values you have in the sparse matrix. That's not needed. By the way, uh, in which the CRS sparse matrix is uh, processed in the code. But when you go to the GPU, you need to know the exact number of elements that have been malloced for each of the arrays that compose the CRS matrix. So this is what is happening. There is that piece of data missing, and we need to add it to have that information available to do the data transfers. Okay. Right. So I was uh, just paying attention, and I am getting some errors here because I put the parameter to the wrong function. So I will fix that. Uh, I added it to the 80 max function when it should be in the complete function. Now it's safe, uh, everything is smooth. One opportunity found the game. Uh, for reference, you have in the quick start the correct code where you can see here on line 16, the new parameter. Uh, on line 30, 33, we get the size of the matrix and then we pass it in the invocation to compute at line 14. So it's the same I've just done here on my second attempt. Okay, so uh, now we can save this new version. This will be like our new original, our baseline here, because we will now create two versions, one using OpenMP uh, and other using OpenACC. So we will come back uh, to this version when we switch between uh, one and another instead of going to the original one. So uh, we have to make some other modifications. Uh, today we are using GCC for the test and we need to add some flags for that. So I will ensure that actually GCC is being used. I think it is, but just in case, I will ensure by adding this. And then we need to add the flags for offloading, which is just to use the PTX backend, which is the NVIDIA backend. Okay, so this will work both for the open and MECC versions, but we needed this little line over here. Okay. So now we are ready to create the and build the different versions. So let's start with OpenMP, which would be a step uh, 23. OpenMP, GPU, and uploading. And now you will notice that there are many more clauses here. 
and we have a bunch of these petties. Uh, I never remember now the, the backslash. Uh, here it is. Right. Can you just try to compile and see the errors? So that's probably the steps that users would take. Sure. And then back to fix it. Yeah, so exactly the thing here is that we are missing the array ranges. So we could uh, fill for you the directive and the map clauses and the variables that are involved, but we are missing the array ranges. We could not infer that information from analyzing the code. So in this case, you will have to build that yourself. This is invalid code, as uh, Helen pointed out. And if I try to build it, which is as did, it will report some errors because we are missing that piece of information. So we have specified for you uh, which clauses you actually have to, I mean, what information you have to add uh, to the clauses here. So we will just... Also, uh, for clarification, this is intentional in the parallel web tools. We do our best effort in the sense that we try to generate as many directives and clauses as possible using the information that we can statically extract from the source code. Whenever we can extract all the necessary information, you will get a complete set of pragmas and clauses that compiles successfully. Whenever we miss some information, we will intentionally generate a pragma that will not compile. That way, whenever you compile, you will get an error in the part of the pragmas or clauses that you need to fill in. There are two ways of filling that information, directly editing the code or by providing hints through the parallelization dialog. So, but this is intentional to guide you and help you to see where the errors are so that the GC OpenMP or OpenACG compiler will point you to the error, where the information that is missing. Okay. Okay. So uh, now I have uh, just copied the information that we provided for you here, which are the building uh, clauses, which is the information that was missing. So now we should be ready to build and run. So uh, being focused on the wrong uh, window. So uh, we have to make something first. We should make sure that we are building the Open MP version, which you saw before in the in the make file that we can build for either uh, Open MP or Open SC. So I seem to have a typo. Yes. Okay. Now it built correctly. So let's execute this. Oh, just like yesterday, I forgot one more thing that we have uh, told you in the quick start, but I missed. Besides uh, updating the build command uh, with OpenMP, you need to use SRAN. Every time you need to run something on the uh, GPU, you need to use MakeRAN. Um, here it is the same, but just in case I will specify the binary and the parameter itself. This is actually what the MakeRAN is doing, but I will do it. Just like that, all the same. So now we're doing that. And it completed in 3.6 seconds. If you recall, the original sequential version ran about three and a half. So this is slightly bit more, more or less the same. So still, no, not very good. In any case, let's uh, go back to the original version prepared to the GPU, which was param and set. And let's try now with OpenECC and see if we get any, any speed up for that case. So OpenMP, GPU uploading, parallelize. And as before, we are missing the uh, uh, data ranges here. So I will do the same as before. Again, if I try to build this, it will fail. Uh, okay, I have the same type as before because I saved that in the version. Okay. 
So I will copy the clause here. Um, okay. Again, I have to change the build command so that the minus f open ACC flag is used instead of uh, minus f open MP. And we can keep the same comment as before for the run. So let's try again. It just did the build step first, and now it is running. So we it is a little bit better. It is uh, still not as good as the CPU version. That's probably related to the uh, to the problem itself, which may not be a good candidate for the GPU or the data not being big enough uh, to um, be a good trade-off. Uh, I mean, to, to be worth the data movement that it is involved uh, from moving the memory from the CPU to the GPU, we need a, a size enough of a problem that I will take advantage of the GPU and make it worth that data movement. Uh, we can save this version uh, just like any other versions, for instance. And we could again uh, switch back and forth to, for instance, the opening please visit, uh, execute this again, see if what was the gain in this case, which, if I recall correctly, was about for one second. Um, we can also try some different compiler. Uh, Manuel, should I try with uh, PGI, see if the OpenACC version is any better? Uh, yes, I think you can try because PGI is recommended for performance. And I think we have time later in the remaining 15 minutes to show the Lulation K example. This is okay, probably so. uh, one of the, the users' uh, feedback in Zoom chat that has issues with performance open ACC. Maybe try a different compiler. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I restored the, the OpenMP multi threading version running on the GPU. Yeah, it was about one second, so it's way better than this ACC version on the GPU. Let's try then with uh, PGI compiler. So I will just recover that ACC version that we created last. So here it is, I think with a typo fix, yes. So everything looks good. Uh, I think I will have to load the, the compiler here. If I can make this fit. Okay. I will load the uh, SPC SDK, system DDR SDK. Uh, let's change. I will just manually uh, enter the command here. Let me see. So, It. Uh, if I'm not wrong, hopefully I didn't introduce any typos on the same run command. Let me clear this. Uh, so probably I didn't uh, didn't uh, inherit the path, so I need to run again. Hopefully now. Okay. Yeah, so I made a mistake. The folder is not called source, but it. Forgetting flux. That's why it's better to use a make file. Okay, now it seems to work fine. It's giving me the 
uh, information from minus and info about validation. Uh, now we should be able to run it. Okay, so better than GCC, GCC, which was over three seconds. Now it is slightly uh, below two, still worse than the multi threading version. But again, that uh, is probably due to the kind of problem and the data size that we are using here. Okay, so uh, Manuel, do you want to get any Q&A for this part or any remarks that you want to make? Yes, I think it's a good moment to for Q&A. And also, I will let me share my screen just to show them the table of uh, runtimes that we have obtained. Okay. So, okay. So this is AT Max, as we said. We knew that it was. This is the structure of the code where you can see that it is composed of a set of files and a set of routines that are intentionally spread across different files. To, to, to expose the, the typical issues related to compilation, missing compilation flags, especially when going to the GPU, as were demonstrated by, by Javier, typical errors. These are the changes he had to type in order to have all the runtime information to move data to the GPU. Remember that when we code for the CPU, we typically pass the arguments that are needed for the computation. But in the GPU, we need to pass arguments that are needed to do the data movement. And in this case, we had this missing information about the number of non-zeros in the sparse matrix. So finally, these are more or less the runtimes that Javier showed. So here you can see the ATMAX execution with GCC on the CPU. And then also two uh, versions of for the CPU, multi-threaded, in this case, we use just four threads, just for the demonstration purposes. And you can see that there is a significant difference between using an atomic strategy, parallelization strategy, or an explicit privatization strategy. In this case, the atomic introduces as many atomic operations as uh, iterations you have in the, in the sparse reduction. So this is too much parallelization, synchronization overhead for the amount of computation that this sparse reduction has, that is relatively low a number of floating point operations. So in this case, the way to reduce the synchronization overhead is by uh, using more memory to allocate thread private copies of the reduction array for each thread. So with this additional memory, you can see that is, we can reduce the execution time and speed up the code on the CPU by 2.4x, okay? But this is still on the CPU side, no data movement. So just parallelizing the computations. So when we go to the GPU, in this case, you can see that we don't, you are not able to improve the runtime of the sequential execution time. We think this is from the training purposes, a good example to show that whenever we want to move to the GPU, it is not necessarily the best a choice for the all types of problems. So, because data movement is really uh, time consuming and is really computational intensive. So, in this case, just using OpenMP or OpenACC, GCC or PGI compiler, we have a lot of difference in the runtime by changing the compiler, as Helen pointed out several times, but we still are not able to improve the sequential execution time. Okay? So, as we, as we said before, this, in the case of ATMAX, the amount of floating point operations that we have in the sparse reduction is somehow related, grows with the, when the amount of memory grows. So whenever we allocate more bigger sparse matrices, we have more floating point operations to do, but still much more memory requirements. What this means is that when we move to the GPU, all the non-zero elements, much more amount of data needs to be moved from the CPU memory to the GPU memory, which introduces this additional data movement parallelization overhead that is different, difficult to amortize, in particular in the ATMAX example. Okay, 
So I don't know if there is any Q&A that we should reply about this and check in the Slack channel for questions. I cannot see any question. I'm gonna check the chat, Zoom chat. Uh, Zoom chat, there was just a question about performance with GCC. So we suggested using um, HPC SDK, which is uh, by PGI for OpenACC and you just showed the results in this table. Excellent. Yeah, I think we could add uh, OpenMP offload with uh, LLVM compiler performance. Thing. Yeah. We, well. can, we can try to add that in our to-do list to add it to the final information. I think now it's maybe more useful for the attendees to go to the Lule SMK example to see an example of a sparse reduction that we can parallelize with the same strategies, with the same compilers to measure the runtime and see the differences in the speed up that we can get. So I will add that to our to do list for the final release of these slides, if it is okay on your side, uh, Helen. So okay. Yes. Back, um, I don't see new questions yet. No, not yet. Anyone want to, to unmute yourself, to ask questions, or type question in Slack or Zoom? Either way is fine. Yeah, sorry, I'm having trouble finding the Slack. Um, from my experience, the GPU has a startup cost whenever you first initialize it. Is are we? Is this taking care of that uh, initialization cost? Is it amortizing it? Uh, for 80 max, uh, in this example, the 80 max uh, kernel is run 10 times, and we uh, with the, the execution time that you see in the output, it is uh, I think the average of these 10 times. I'm not sure if we are uh, ignoring the worst case runtime and the best case runtime. The worst case runtime will probably have this initial start uh, time of the GPU. All right, yeah, I mean, I mean, for example, when I run on Summit or whatever, it's like a 15 seconds or so before the, the GPU actually responds the first time. So uh, if you don't yeah. ignore that initialization cost, it could be, Coming off those results. So I, I think that uh, it is not, but let, let me let us confirm it and we will reply to that in the chat. Okay, to see how we are explicitly benchmarking the this uh, example code. Thanks. Any other questions? Um, Manuel, can you share with us the updated homework sheet from um, steps 20 on? Um, please. Uh, I, I can get it from the, uh, the website you provided. <coughs> Oh, sorry, can we, probably we can share it. Uh, just talk, talk. Send, send to the Slack general uh, with that PDF so people can, if you haven't <clears throat> finished through step 19, can work on it. And if you have, you can you know work on the extra steps from this guide. Yeah. Yeah, we will share it uh, uh, right now. Just want to remind people to use the reserved notes today and put, make sure you use dash Q shared option so that people can share a GPU node. Yeah, I just uploaded yeah. it to the general conversation. Uh, also, it, it, should be, it should work. I mean, we have updated the link to the website. Maybe it is the, the cache uh, or something that you need to reload, but in any case, it is in the Slack now. Thank you. And for the PW trainer and analyzer, if you don't run, you can actually run on the logging node. And I can only recommend this for a very small code. Uh, a logging node to a quick few seconds analyzer um, check is fine. If you want to uh, real applications, um, it's, it's big, then we want you to grab a um, compute node. 
But for GPU side, you have to do everything on, on a compute node with um, S alloc. So, so for the <clears throat> GPU, we use the reserve nodes, and we have released the CPU side because I think the reserved GPU is sufficient for us. And if you want to do something on the CPU side, and if you do not plan to run anything, it's fine on, on the logging node. Any other questions so far? Uh, uh, I have a maybe a naive question. Where you get uh, this, somebody get this power analyzer 0. 0.16? Because I realize I have only 0. 0.15, which is completely different behavior. Yes, there are many improvements in the 16 version. Yeah, but uh, when I, uh, uh, I, I, maybe I just download from your site 15, so where should I get 16? Oh, okay. I thought you were from talking about- From your site, I got um, a link with 15. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the issue is that we have not published it officially. But, uh, yet, so so it, and it doesn't work, I would say. May I say this way? Uh, so yeah, you, where, where, yeah. where, where we can get 16? It's yeah, you like use the, uh, this directory. Yeah, you use the default version? I just use what the, the, I got from uh, your site. Yeah, so just it's load the right. PW analyzer. Uh, it will load the default version. Yes, and it is 0 0.15. Yes, yeah. and uh, the default version is RC1-0.16.0. I just have a, a humble suggestion. Could you put this analyzer to the this, uh, directory with parallel way? Are you running it on your laptop or on Cori? No, I'm like I'm running it on the, on the Cori. Okay, and Cori is the version sixteen. But where is it? Um, Cori is. I'm not running it to the Cori, and I, I run PV report. I have nothing. Should you load the module without specifying module version? You I, get the default. I try, I try to do it. Maybe I, maybe something wrong. Uh, I did something wrong. Uh, can you just uh, maybe in the Slack uh, paste uh, the results for module list? Okay, just a moment. I'm going to stop sharing just in case any of you want to share the terminal in Cori to show the different versions of Analyzer and the default one. So while you try, I mean, what I was uh, saying for is that uh, Power Analyzer version 0 0.16 is not officially out yet. So you are running a release candidate there on Cori, but uh, hopefully it will be out uh, next week, just in case you want to download it and try it on your own machines. But in any case, uh, you should still have access to Cori uh, to do the experiments.